Questions 21 to 25 on the 2007 Grade 8 AMC 8. Two cards are dealt from a deck of four red cards labeled ABCD and four green cards labeled ABCD. A winning pair is two of the same color or two of the same letter. What is the probability of drawing a winning pair? These are our cards A, B, C, D for the red and then for the green A, B, C, D. Now it's a probability question so as always for any probability question it's usually going to be a numerator over, over a denominator. Probably not usually, probably always. So let's first just talk about the denominator, the total number. Well, we have to deal two cards from eight, correct? So first card, second card, those are the two cards we have to deal. For the first card, we have eight choices. And then once that card is dealt, we've got only seven cards left. So that's how many choices we have for this second card. You multiply them, you get 56. But in this question, order does not matter. Why? If I deal a card that is A, that is red, and then I dealt a card that is, say, C, that is green, that is the same as CA. If I had a green card that is C as my first uh, card that I dealt, and if my red A was the second, this is the same in terms of what the person gets. So because order in this question does not matter, this actually double counts. So it's not 56, it's actually 28. 28 unique hands that are going to be dealt. So our denominator is 28. Now we have to figure out the numerator. And the numerator is basically going to be the condition that the question is referring to. And what is the condition? That we have to have a winning pair. And that is achieved when you have two of the same color or same letter. All right, so let's talk about both of these. Same letter is actually probably the easier one. That's just either AA, BB, CC or DD, right? You have the red card A, uh, green card A, uh, red card B, green card B, and so on, right? You get it. So we got four here, four possible winners. Okay. Now, same color. Same color probably shouldn't be too bad, but let's figure this out. Same color basically means that you're going to have just cards from the red so for example it's just going to be red cards so a b the red a and the red b or a c or a d you see what i mean or b c or b d or c d that's the only way you can have same color and in a very similar way you can also have two that are from the green. And that's A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. Correct? So, how many do I have total? Six here and six here, that's 12. So, the number of winners total is 4 plus 12, which is 16. And that's my probability. Now, of course, this has to be reduced to lowest terms. So 16 over 28, divide top and bottom by 4, and you'll get 4 over 7. So number 21, the answer is D. A lemming sits at a corner of a square with a side length of 10. A lemming, I'm assuming, is an insect. Or maybe it's not. No, it doesn't matter. The lemming runs 6.2 meters along a diagonal toward the opposite corner. It stops, makes a 90 degree turn, and runs two more meters. A scientist measures the shortest distance between the lemming and each side of the square. What is the average of these four distances in meters? 
Actually, now that I think of it, I think a lemming is a, a rodent, like similar to a rat or a mouse. Anyhow, so we've got a square, right? Here's the square, and this lemming is sitting originally here at this corner. And it's going to travel along the diagonal. So it's going to go, I guess, like that. And they give you some information. They say that the square has dimensions 10 by 10, sides are 10. And then it's going to travel 6.2, so it's going to go approximately, I don't know, till somewhere. Let's say it goes till here. And then it turns 90 degrees and travels another 2 meters. So it's going to go, let's say, this way and travels another 2 meters. So this is 90 degrees right here. Okay. And this from here to here is 6.2, and this is 2. Now we are here. From that point, a scientist measures the distances, shortest distances to each of the four sides. So this side is like that, and this side is like that, shortest distance, and then of course to that side, and finally to that side. And then we have to figure out the lengths and then take the average. Okay, well, I don't know, so let's just label these. I'll call this x, and then therefore this distance from there to there is 10 minus x. And then this distance I will call y, and therefore that distance from there to there is 10 minus y. So to figure out the average, it would be x plus 10 minus x plus y plus 10 minus y and divided by 4 because there's four distances. And let's see here that x's cancel and so do the y's. Great. So that means 10 plus 10, 20 over 4 is 5. So after all that big long song and dance with distances and degrees, everything cancels. So number 22, the answer is C. What is the area of the shaded pinwheel shown in the 5x5 five five grid? Let's blow this up as big as we can. And then I'll draw one line from the center to this point right here. And when I do that, I hope you can see that it cuts that exactly in half. So this region that I drew with the green lines, that represents essentially one-eighth of all the shaded regions because this is identical to the other half and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. So eight triangles. So if I can figure out the area of one of them, I'll just multiply by 8, and there you go. I've got the area of the shaded region, AS, area of shaded region. Well, that area should be pretty straightforward. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And we can label this the base from here to here, and that's just 1. It's, it's, a, it's a grid 5 by 5, they tell you that, right? They tell you it's a 5 by 5 grid. And then the height, what would be the height though? Well, the height shouldn't be too much of a problem. The height is basically from here to here. That can represent the height of that triangle. And from here to here is one, and from here to here is a half, because that is the center, and that center would cut that in half. So. 1 divided by 2, which is a half. So that means that height is 1 plus a half, which is 3 over 2. So we've got a base of 1 and a height of 3 over 2. So this looks like 3 over 4 is the area of that triangle. So the area of the shaded region would be 8 times the area of each of those triangles, and each of those triangles is 3 over 4. So that gives me... 8 divided by 4 is 2, 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 is the answer to number 23, and that would be 
choice B. A bag contains four pieces of paper, each labeled with one of the digits one, two, three, or four with no repeats. Three of these pieces are drawn one at a time without replacement to construct a three-digit number. What is the probability that the three-digit number is a multiple of three? We have one, two, three, and four on pieces of paper and we are going to choose three of those numbers. So first and foremost, let's figure out how can we choose three. Well, we can choose three as follows. Either we choose one, two, and three, and this had no four in it, okay? Or we can choose uh, two, three, and four. This had no one in it. Or we can choose one, two, three, two, three, four, 1, 3, and 4, this had no 2, and we can choose 1, 2, and 4, and this had no 3. That's the only way we can choose three numbers out of these four. Now, for each of these, we have to create a three-digit number, correct? So, for example, for 1, 2, 3, our three-digit numbers can be 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. Correct? In a very similar way, if we have 2, 3, and 4 as the numbers that we've chosen, our three digit numbers could be 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 3, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4, 2, and 4, 2, 3, and 4, 3, 2. And in a very similar way, I'll just write out the ones for the last two. So there you go. How many numbers did I get? We got six here, six here, six here, and six there. So I got a total of 24 numbers. Okay? So of these 24 numbers, I've got to figure out how many are multiples of three. Now, there's a quick way of doing that. Instead of going through every number and saying, okay, let me see if it divides three evenly. And here is the quick rule, and some of you already know this rule. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So all we have to do is look at the sum of the digits. For the first one, the digits are 1, 2, and 3. What is the sum? 6. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. So therefore, all of these will be divisible by 3 following this rule. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Next one, 2, 3, 4. What is the sum there? It's uh, 2 plus 3, which is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? And the answer is yes. So all of these will be divisible by 3. Next one, 1, 3, 4. Sum is 4 plus 4, 8. Is 8 divisible by 3? No. So none of these will be divisible by 3. None of these. The next one, 1, 2, 4, the sum is 7. Is 7 divisible by 3? It is not, so none of those will be divisible by 3. So how many did I circle? I circled 12. So the probability is 12 divided by the total, which is 24. And in lowest terms, that is a half. So number 24, the answer is C. On the dartboard shown in the figure, the outer circle has a radius of 6 and the inner circle has a radius of 3. Three radii divide each circle into three congruent regions with point values shown. The probability that dart will hit a given region is proportional to the area of the region. When two darts hit the board, the score is the sum of the point values in the region. What is the probability that the score is odd? So first and foremost, we need to figure out the area of each of these regions. So let's start with the small circle. The small circle has an area of pi r squared, and that small radius is 3. So that's pi 3 squared, which is 9 pi. Now each of these small regions 
therefore it will be one third of that because it tells you three congruent regions that each of those radii help divide this diagram into. So each of those is going to be 9 pi divided by 3, which is 3 pi. Okay? In terms of its area. So I'll just write the 3 pi in here. These are 3 pi in terms of their areas. Okay? Now we do the exact same thing for the big circle. That area is pi big R squared, and big R is 6. So that's pi 6 squared, which is 36 pi. Now each of these, of course, these regions are one third, so each of those would be 36 pi divided by 3, which is 12 pi. But we don't want this full region, we just want this region right here, that one. How do you get that? Well, you take 12 pi and subtract from it the 3 pi. So that means this will be 9 pi, this will be 9 pi, and this will be 9 pi. Okay? So far, so good. You're following me? No tricks, right? Okay. Now let's move this up. I think we have pretty much everything that we need. So here we go. Now I have to make a little scenario here of how do I get two darts? Where do they land? Well, they can land either in the 2, which I will label as 2L. I'll call that 2L, 2 large. They can land here, which is one large, or they can land here, which is one large. Now, these guys are in the small circle, so I'll call those smalls. I'll call those one small, two small, and two small. Okay? So those are the six possible places a dart can land. And we have two darts. So our scenarios will be as follows. We will have a whole bunch of scenarios. Let's see. First dart has six choices. Second dart can also land on the same spot. So six times six, we will have 36 possible ways that the darts can land. Okay, 36 is not that big of a number, so I think we should be able to do this. So here we go. So for the first dart, we could be 2L, and it can also land on 2L again. Or it could be 2L, 1L. 2L and then 1L. Remember, this is different. Don't get confused. Or it could be 2L and then 1S. 2L, 2S. Or 2L, 2S. Okay? Those are the sixth combination where the dart lands on 2L first. And then the second dart lands on any of those six. All right? So in a very similar way, I do the, all the other ones. Next one, we'll start with this guy. 1L is the first dart. Second dart can be either 2L. It can be either 1L again. It could be the other 1L. It could be 1S, 2S, or 2S. And that first dart was 1L. Right? You get the hang of it. So I'll do one more, and then I'll, I'll talk you through one more, and then I'll do all the other ones uh, without talking you through it. So the next one, we have this one as the first guy. So the second one can be 2L or 1L or the next 1L or 1S or 2S or 2S. You got it? So these are basically the possible ways that the two darts can land. And I'll just fill the rest of them. So there we go. Now we have to look at our criteria. What is the probability that the score is odd. Okay, so we only need to concentrate on the odd guys. Well, it's a probability question. So at the very end, I'm going to have to figure out a probability, right? And that probability is always at a fraction. So something over something. Well, this, the, the something over something is going to be a fraction, right? But it's not as simple in this question because the total, I've got 6 times 6. I got 36, right? But here's the thing. Each of these does not have an equal probability. It varies. And because it varies, this system 
of frag figuring out the uh, denominator and numerator is not going to be valid in this question. Why? Because the probability that a dart will hit a given region is proportional to the area of the region. And that is very important. So let's figure that out. First and foremost, we only need to concentrate on the sums that are odd. So I'll circle those. Odd sums, this one, 2 plus 1 is 3, that's odd. That's odd, and that's odd. All the other ones would give you 4, which is an even number. This is odd, uh, this is odd, and this is odd. That's odd, that one, and that one. And let's see here, that one, this one, and this one, that one, that one, and that one. And then finally, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Right? Okay, here we go. Now we are going to look at our probabilities. So, the probability of landing on 2L. After you do a few of these, it'll become very quick. 2L. Where is 2L? It's this guy, right? Well, it's 9 pi. That is the area. So 9 pi doesn't sound like a probability, right? It's 9 pi over the total area of the entire circle. The total, total area of the entire circle, pi r squared, where r is the big R, which was 6, is 36 pi. So 9 pi over 36 pi, that is the probability of landing on this guy right here, which I have labeled as 2L. And that just looks like 1 over 4. Okay, does that make sense? So very similarly, for this guy, it's also the same. 9 pi over 36 pi, which is 1 over 4. And so is that one. Okay, now let's look at the little guys. For them, it's 3 pi over 36 pi. That's the probability of landing the dart in those little regions. And that is 1 over 12. So this is 1 over 12, and that's 1 over 12. Okay? So, coming back to here, the probability of landing on the 2L is 1 over 4. And you have to multiply that by the probability of landing on the other 1L. That's 1 over 4. And that is... 1 over 16. Okay? The next one, 2L, again, 1 over 4, times 1L, another 1 over 4, and that is, again, 1 over 16. All right? Does that make sense? Next one, 2L, 1 over 4, but now we have 1S, this guy. It's not 1 over 4, it's 1 over 12, the probability. So that is 1 over 48. Okay, so in a very similar way, you'll calculate the probabilities for all of these, and I'll, I'll go through them only if they're different. So this first one was no different, it's just 1 over 16. Okay, this one we have 1L and 2S, and that's 1 over 48. And this is also 1 over 48, probability. 1L, 2L, that's 1 over 16. 1L, 2S, 1 over 48, and 1 over 48. 1S, 2L, 1 over 48. 1S, 2S, okay, this is a little bit different. 1S, right here, 1 12th, times 2S, which is right here, and that's also 1 over 12. So that's basically 1 over 12 times 1 over 12, which is 1 over 144. Got it? And this guy here, it's the same thing, 1 over 144. Okay? Now we get to the, the last 6 here, and this is going to be 1 over 48. 1 over 48, and this is 1 over 144. And the last one, we have 1 over 48, 1 over 48, and finally 1 over 144. Now to get the total probability, 
we've got to add up all these guys. So let's see. Let's how many 1 over 16s do we have? 1 2 3 4 That's it. 4 of them. And then how many 1 over 48s do we have? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 of those. And how many of the 1 over 144s do we have? 1 2 3 4. 4 of those. Okay? So this looks like 4 over 16, which is 1 quarter, 10 over 48, 5 over 24, and then 4 over 144 is what, 1 over 36? And then common denominator, 72, I believe. So this is going to be uh, adding fractions, 18, and then this is um, 3, so 15, and then this is 2. So that looks like 35 over 72. And there you go. 35 over 72 is the answer to number 25, and that would be choice B.